So coming back, the advice that I want to give is that take the risk, do something different, and just let your mind ex explore different possibilities and grow and expand. That's what you. That's what all you need to do, especially when you're young. Welcome, Francis. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, Thank you for having me. Your investment, you know, journey. So maybe we start with the beginning. Um, why did you become an investor? Uh, the true story is it was completely unexpected and serendipity. Uh, long story short, um, I uh, was I've been always wanting to start my own company. So I was doing uh, a project of myself uh, in a startup uh, space when I was still in Palo Alto, and uh, I decided to move to Hong Kong because I married to a uh, someone from Hong Kong, Simon. And uh, I knew no one from Hong Kong and an investor and advisor of mine said, why don't I introduce you to um, people at Horizons? Uh, not knowing what I'm getting myself into, I started the journey of, uh, of becoming an investor. And uh, it has been a very uh, fruitful journey and I learned a lot about myself and about the world too. How do you feel you're different as an investor from others that you have met. Uh, so a little bit background of myself. Uh, I grew up in Taiwan, uh, spent the first 20-ish years of my life in uh, Asia. And then I went to the US to study uh, for MBA and also it really exposed myself in the whole technology and, and startup um, environment. Then I moved to Hong Kong due to opportunity and life circumstances, I joined Horizons. Um, what made me, I think uh, there are several things. One is uh, I uh, grew up in a very entrepreneurial family. My father, my brother and everyone uh, in my family kind of uh, run their own business. Although uh, it, most of them are small, medium business uh, out of Taiwan, but growing up, I do witness what, it, what it's like. The, the freedom, the autonomy, and also the immense responsibility that you carry as an entrepreneur. So, uh, and now um, I founded a few companies myself. Uh, I, I, I think I, I know intimately what it, what it was like being a founder, and that perspective gave me a different uh, edge when I speak or uh, engage with the founder because they can tell that I truly know what they're going through and the challenges they need to go through when they were young, maybe just seed or series A, starting out building their product all the way to companies, maybe a thousand people. You are facing a whole bunch of very different challenges every day. So being able to relate to them and understand them and advise them what might come uh, is something that's uh, that's very unique that I that I bring to the company that I work with. So I think that's the really that's the biggest differentiator. Interesting that you have had this dual role. Maybe let's talk a bit about the companies you founded. Um, like, uh, why did you start them? And you know, was there a time when you were like, oh, this is this is this is not this is really much harder than I thought. I I might as well give up, but you didn't. Um, so the first, uh, kind of project that I worked on when I was still in the U.S. was more like the stitch fix of today. So maybe the, the women audience, um, in the room might know this company better that they were started by, a, also a young woman, I think in, in the mid thirties. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, the idea was essentially using technology, modern technology, um, and mobile and data to, uh, reinvent how people, uh, present themselves. So you're talking about using data to break down what you might, if you want to look confident today, how, uh, what kind of, how, how do you present yourself is the best in terms of the clothing, the accessories, etc. So uh, the 
vision that I had at that time is that I believe everyone deserves to look fabulous, and but effortlessly, and you don't need to invest so much of your time, which is the most resources of all. Uh, to do that, and technology can help you save a lot of your time, make you look 10x better than than what it is today. So, long story short, that was the first idea, and and very quickly I realized that if I were to make this company really or make this idea really materialize and successful, I need to um, know the culture, and it's a very very consumer centric business, and. And and if I decided to move to Hong Kong, I gotta start something scratch from here. So that's that's that. And then again, I got the opportunity to、um, join、uh, an investor platform, which I decided to do. So that's the first experiences、um, uh, that I had earlier. And second is、uh, co-founding a company together with my husband, and that was very very different experience because it was.、Uh, The company has been around for a seven year plus and has been doing relatively well. It has its challenges and everything, but that is the real kind of startup and founding founder experiences that I that, that I've had.、Um, being、uh, both an investor and a founder gave me different lenses to look at things. As an investor and as a founder, sometimes you will think that your perspectives and agendas are. Are、uh, on the opposite side, but the best companies always align the interests from both sides,、mm-hmm. um, and I think that's a that's that's a really really important part. Absolutely,、um, I, I I'm still in awe of how you're an investor and you co-founded a company with your husband,、um, and how do you guys balance sort of work and life? Because it seems like. You know, being an entrepreneur can be, you know, all-consuming. Yeah.、Um, so work is life. That's the honest answer. And、um, if you were a founder,、uh, you think about your company twenty-four-seven. And if you're an investor, you also think about your work twenty-four-seven. And that happens when you truly love your job. Love is kind of. Too romantic, I think. It's not love. It's just like it's not. Na- it's so natural for you to think about the problems that you see in the companies or the opportunities, the optimism or excitement. That after you speak to a founder, you gain that kind of new perspective and new possibility of the world because they're solving a big problem, and you feel like, oh, you might be able to be part of that and help them achieve their dream. So that excitement feels. Your energy and kind of make me think about it all the time,、um, and I think being a founder, that's even more so. So, work and life, it's a for me, it's more about how I allocate my time. I really think for young people like ourselves, time is on our side, but time is our most most precious resources, and we need to be very thoughtful in how we use our time. So I might prioritize my day in a in in different way from you.、Uh, if you are in your early twenties, maybe you can s- spend most of your time investing in yourself,、uh, learn something new, learn more about yourself, expose yourself in different experiences and environment, and put yourself in an environment where you are surrounded by people who can help you become better. That's the most important. One of the most important ways to spend your time when I was in early twenties or even younger. But you know, as people mature and go into different life phases, then now my children are the most important thing to me, and family, and maybe you need to care for your elder parents, etc. So I, I I think a lot of people ask about, oh, how do you balance your work and life? I I I don't think to me it's not balance. It's about time allocation and how you spend your energy and 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 my share. I love how you talk about time and and、um, sort of going back in time.、Um, if you could if you could、uh, kind of go back in time and and recall some of the most memorable experiences that sort of were the building blocks of who you are today. What might some of those things be? Oh, that's a very、uh, big question.、Um, 
So I think I am still. I'm in my mid thirties. I'm still constantly trying to learn more about myself. And our definition of success and definition of happiness changes and evolve when we go through different phases of our life. So、uh, I believe in being open-minded and just explore the different circumstances that life puts you, and go through with it, and try to make the best out of it. Uh, like I said, becoming an investor、uh, and being able to work with the smart founders,、um, solving big problems, inventing technologies—these are not my plan. I have never planned to, and because I don't even know that such job existed when I was younger,、uh, so I just kind of do what I can, do the best, and try my best in everything that I do. And if I know I want to achieve something, then I will、um, plan backwards and plan so meticulously that I know that this is really the best that I can do. So I know it sounds it sounds very very vague, but I I do believe that life is not linear at all, especially in our in our generation. It's more like,、um, for me, it's more like a garden. So every life experiences that you are doing is like planting a seed in your little garden, and you plant so many seeds that you don't even know.、Uh, one day, you know something blossom, and it's also a bit like what Steve Jobs said: when all the dots were connected, but it only connected when you look back. You will never know when you stand here and look beyond. You, you only connected when you look back. And that's kind of my philosophy. I love that. I love the idea of sowing seeds. And we both have young daughters. And, yeah. And I told you a bit about this um, um, previously. Was you know what I, I I have my kids watch Shark Tank with me every night, hoping that they would look at entrepreneur stories and and someday want to turn their ideas into reality. And.、Um, But instead, my daughter was asking me, you know, mommy, I I don't understand why why is there only one girl investor? You know, why aren't there more? And I couldn't quite explain it to her,、um, which was kind of you know the seed of a thought that that made me want to do this set of videos. So if we had to plant little seeds of experiences、mm-hmm. um, for our daughters, for young women,、um, for for high schoolers, or or even you know college students. What are some of the seeds you think they should be planting in order to, you know, prepare themselves、um, in an investor role down the road?、Uh, and so, be- before I answer the question,、uh, I really appreciate and respect Erica what you're doing,、uh, and you draw little inspirations from your daily life and do something、uh, that can benefit a lot more people. So it's it's really really、uh, well done. Uh, planting seeds. I think so. If I were to think back, there are several experiences that benefit me the most, or at least now in the long, you know,、uh, kind of memory folder in my brain.、Uh, one is I went. I was in、um, my first job when I was in college. Is the first intern, the real internship that I that I did was not. So I I majored in finance and business when I was in、uh, university. Ninety nine percent of my classmates went to、uh, go do internship internship in either the big consulting firm, investment banks, accounting firm, law firm,、um, all these like top tier professional services, and there's nothing wrong about that.、Uh, but I told myself that if I were to spend the rest of my forty fifty years working. And I only have four years of my time where I am kind of a student, and I don't have as much baggage. I don't have financial obligation. I want to do something different. I want to enrich my life with something that's that I will remember and really nourish me as a as a whole person, and not just adding something on my resume. So I、uh, signed up to a work and travel program when when it was still very in vogue back in the day, and there are lots of problems. Down the road, but at, at, at that time it was something very new and and very novel. So I went on doing that, and I got my I got assigned 
to uh, a job working in Six Flags, which is like a domestic version of Disneyland in the middle of in Kentucky, which is like the middle of the US. So imagine for um, 20, someone very early 20s and very young, the first experience in the US is in Kentucky. That's completely different from what you saw on TV or movies or your friends traveling in New York, San Francisco. So I was uh, a little girl coming from Taiwan, wearing orange uniform every day, taking the bus to uh, the dormitory in Kentucky. And my first job was to uh, sell pizza. And then I went on selling pizza, cotton candy, hamburgers, working in the kitchen, catering, everything that you could imagine. To a lot of people, I was insane. I was wasting my time. Kind of like you spent a whole three months of your time working pizza? Like, are you crazy? Are you wasting your time and money? But I didn't think that way. I thought that was something unique and made me different and made me see the world in a different way compared to other people who are probably getting very similar training, similar perspectives, surrounded by similar kind of people. I got to hang out with, um, for example, uh, 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 someone 18 who's my manager, uh, who probably didn't know the difference between Thailand and Taiwan. And, you know, that was mind blowing and completely open you know, my, it's, it's really about expanding your horizon. So long story short, um, if I were uh, a young girl, and that's what I would uh, tell my two young daughters too, the, the importance is to know that the world is infinite and full of different people with very different upbringing, very, very different perspectives and different life experiences. So I would encourage them and my own daughters to spend their time when they were young to explore and see the world and not conform with what everybody is everybody else is doing because at the end of the day you know if you were to interview but if you were to be interviewed by the same interviewer which is what happened to me because you know later on when on interviewing at a bank when they were like maybe 20 to 30 other uh, candidates, and I was one of them. All of them talk about very similar internship experiences. And only I was the, I was the only one who can tell a very different story. And that really impressed the interviewer and got me the job that I really wanted, which set me up to, you know, other bigger opportunities down the road. So coming back, the advice that I want to give is that take the risk, do something different and just let your mind ex explore different possibilities and grow and expand. That's what you, that's what all you need to do, especially when you are young. I love that. I love the courage to take the risk. And I love sort of the, uh, the, the adventurous side um, of, of every human being to go ahead and try something new, not just what everybody else told you to do. Um, so yeah. that you can have your own unique perspective. and. And when the seed becomes, you know, a tree and the tree becomes a fruit, it's a whole different kind of um, uh, alternative that, that other people haven't seen before. Um, as an investor who, who has, you know, had all these really diversified experience, been an entrepreneur, um, where do you see the world going? I mean, what would you like to continue to fuel to invest in? How would you like to see your investments change the world? Where the world is going, I wish I knew. <laughs> Look at what happened in the past 12 months. Uh, I, the world has, it's a very, it, I, it's just a very different place. And a lot of ideology, um, what each country represents, the values, they're very, I, I, I think we're in a very major transitional phase in the long history of of human beings and again we will only know what that means when we look back maybe 10 years or 20 years later but now i know there are several big problems that the world is facing environment inequality poverty uh, obviously infectious disease that everybody can see today and there are a group of scientists all over the world who are using 
their research and decades of uh, 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 studies and invent something to try to solve these problems. I personally work, spend most of my time working on financial inclusion because I believe access to capital change your life. And in the world of extreme inequality, if you give people access to finance or access to capital to help them achieve what they want to achieve, be it as small as buying a laptop that opens up a whole world of information to maybe um, being able to afford to a foreign degree. That those are the things that really change someone's life. And it can only be achieved by opening up and give them access of capital to do what they want to do to improve their lives. So that's what I have been spending the past few years to work on. Finding solutions or technology, products, companies who kind of democratize and liberate all these uh, uh, all these possibilities. Now, there are people that in my team uh, work on environmental problems. They are finding alternative to plastic to really solve this problem at scale. There are, pro there are people who uh, are trying to use synthetic biology to solve the demand and supply problem of food. So I do think because of the kind of a universal act not universal okay easy access of information today we are very fortunate to be born in the era where it's much easier to identify big problems than before because of information and also uh in every field in technology and sciences you can find interesting solutions that might or might not be able to solve that big problems so that's I'm I'm still very optimistic about the world and 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 about the future of my two young children. Um, other problems like um, digital bullying, digital safety. We have taken safety for granted. You know, living in Hong Kong, you don't really worry about your physical safety when you're out and about. But what about on the internet? In the digital world, are our children safe? Are women safe? The, the reality is not because that more than 70% of the women and young children suffer from online bullying or digital abuse, one way, one form or the other, online. And there are people using technology trying to identify the source of these abusement and attack and trying to create a safer internet. So uh, I, I do think that with, with these brilliant and crazy mind of founders and investors who support them, uh, there are lots of possibility, and I'm very optimistic about the future. I love that. 100% behind all the buckets you just talked about. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm always excited to meet women who are investing because we bring an additional perspective to how we see the world, how we, how we see problems, how we see them as opportunities, and how we can fuel them with capital. I love your point about financial inclusion um, because at the end of the day, it's not the financing part. It's the fact that it is fuel to, to make changes, to, to drive um, um, kind of or deliver a world that, that we want to see. You talked a bit about brilliant founders and investors. So could you share a little bit about what you look for in good founders or good team? Founders are sophisticated, complicated animals. And they, there are different characteristics when you are talking to early stage uh, founders versus a later, more mature company. But um, if I were to share some observation in the commonality among these founders, um, they are mostly, they were all problem solvers. And they're good founders who identify big problems, worthwhile problems that can be solved by technology. They're founders who might not. So problem solver is kind of you if you are if you want to build great companies and become like exceptional tier one founders, most of them are really good problem solvers. And they can think about designing the products uh, because they either go through those pain points themselves or they have some first-hand intimate, either from their families or their loved ones who face those problems. 
So uh, a lot of founders build great products and great com great company because of the personal experience that they're that that the problems are authentic and true to them, and they are also very very fast learner. Um, to build a complicated or uh, or high growth business, you ultimately will have to have very different functions and dimensions and complexity in your organizations. And as a founder, it's kind of impossible for uh, a, a, a late twenties or early thirties or even mid thirties to have experience to know how to solve all of these. So you're not just building product solving problems, serving your customers. You also need to create a culture and create an organization where your employees thrive. And all these are very complicated um, social science and organizational behaviors. So great founders and great leaders would know. Okay, here's my strength. I am great. I'm great at, uh, for example, evangelizing the idea. Or I'm, I'm a great engineer. I'm a super visionary uh, product strategist. And then you identify your own weakness. Maybe I, I'm not so great at, uh, for example, uh, sales. I'm not so great at. Developing my people or human relationships, then you find you need to attract and convince the right talents who join you, and create something bigger than yourself together. So ultimately, I think a great founders need to have all these qualities, and you don't need to have all of those from day one. The most important thing is that you know what you don't know, and you learn fast. You find people who know better than you, learn from them, make them advisor. You you make them want to help you. So. How do you make other people willing to help you? Is also a very important skill, um, and 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 yeah. So those are you know just some top top level uh, uh, observations, and there are lots of nuances, of course. Francis, thank you so much. You're an inspiration, and I'm so glad you know that we got to chat and share a bit about your experience and your insights on investing um, with. Hopefully, future investors who are now looking at this and, and, and they're dreaming to become like you someday. Thank you so much for your time. Thank、today. you. Thank you.